Greetings, radio listeners, and welcome to a new show we call Something on the Radio. Our first guest today I had the pleasure of meeting around the turn of the century, but I want to take you back to the previous century, decades earlier, when I was leaning on a lamppost somewhere in Hollywood doing the dishes, and I heard something on the radio. There was this wigged-out cat channeling a surreal reality into an otherwise mundane and ordinary world. His name was Shadow Stevens, and Shadow's with us today. Shadow, welcome. Thank you for coming. Chilling. <laughs> Things, that, what could he possibly be talking about? Which era? Which possibility? Well, this was in the mid-70s. Mm, could have been Burnt Karma Burgers in the Restaurant of Life Awards. Probably was. Probably Sounds with, very familiar. Yeah, with the Mothers of Invention in the background. <laughs> Shadow, I'd like you to take us back to uh, when you were just a little youngin' in the world, and what sparked your interest in radio, and where were you? Were you on the west side of the Mississippi or the east side? Well, I was in North Dakota, Jamestown, North Dakota. That would put us in the K's. Yeah, we'd be up where the Missouri, the, the Missouri goes through Fargo, and, and Minnesota. I see. North Dakota and Minnesota. So I am west of the of Missouri. Now that you know exactly where I was. <laughs> the um, No, um, Jamestown, North Dakota. A little town of 15,000 people and uh, not a lot to do. But a great place to grow up. Uh, really extremely beautiful in the summer. Hmm. Quite nice in the spring. Quite nice in the fall. Winter, not so much. Um, a lot to do. You know, you have to have a good sense of humor to live in North Dakota or drink a lot. And uh, people in North Dakota tend to have a good sense of humor, and they're real down-to-earth people. And, and we spend a lot of time indoors. I grew up, um, we, didn't have te- we didn't have any television until I was about 12 years old. Um, I grew up listening to uh, the radio, Suspense, I Tales see. To keep you in suspense, <laughs> and and I was taken by the magic of that. My father bought a a tape recorder when I was, mm, I guess, about eight years old, and I was taken with being able to record and make up stories, and then cut in little pieces of music and tell a story with the music. You know, like the Flying Saucer. You remember those those uh, uh, records that came B- out back Buchanan in the Buchanan and Goodman. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. and 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 I thought that was terrific. So I did that. So you were at what age? This this is like eight or nine. And were you married at this time? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I'm the I'm the oldest of five children. My parents um, didn't drink, smoke, use drugs, curse, or fight in front of the kids. They owned clothing stores and toy stores. One time they owned a go kart track. They owned the firework stands in town. Like five, you know, all of the kids would run a different fireworks stand on the 4th of July. So you were very fortunate. We were very fortunate. I'm, I'm re- so much so that I was embarrassed about it for years, you know, because you hear terrible stories of people's childhood. And I have um, magic in my childhood. Yes. So my dad gets this tape recorder, and I'm able to do things. And it turns out that my uncle, who owned a couple of radio stations, heard some of my tapes and he thought, well, he's really, really would be interesting, you know. And did he know. live in Fargo? He lived in Valley City, which is about 35 miles okay. east of Jamestown. All right. And he sent me a, a night kit, a wireless broadcaster. And this would allow me the magic of being able to broadcast into another room. So I could be in my bedroom and broadcast to a radio in the living room. And this was amazing. And this was a legal device. A, a legal device. Okay. You know, it's just yeah. in the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Except that I went down to the um, <laughs> to the television repair shop, and I said to the guy, "How do I make it? How do I soup it up?" <laughs> he said, "Well, you, what you can do is this and this." And and he helped me finish up the. You know, I had to solder it all together, and and I was into you know all those things. I could follow directions, and um, putting up a, an antenna. So I crawled to the top of my three-story house out on the, uh, you know, I, you know, shimmied along the top third of the third floor and hung upside down 
<laughs> and and screwed in a a, um, a a something that would hold the antenna. Um, put a ground on it. Ran the antenna Very hundred important. feet to a to an evergreen tree in the backyard. So I had a hundred <laughs> foot antenna. Then I go in and turn on the wireless broadcaster. Suddenly I could hear it out in the neighborhood. Well, how far could we hear? Well, let's put on a song. We put on a song and get in the car. We could hear it for a mile. Now, you direction. had a microphone aimed towards a, uh, a little... No, I had the tape recorder, I had, and, and, and I had a, an erector set so that I'd have a microphone that would sit right by my mouth, just like this. Just like these are. Okay. And, and a little um, toggle switch that I put in, and then a turntable, which is a record player, and a tape recorder. And I could switch back and forth between them. And I had uh, uh, girls in the neighborhood that were teenagers, had all the, the latest rock and roll. So I would borrow their records and record them on the tape recorder. Now I had a massive library of great songs, you know, Little Richard and Chuck Berry and all the, all the great pop songs of the time. Ten-year-old disc jockey. Ten-year-old disc jockey broadcasting in every direction on KING. King Radio for all of Northern Jamestown. Amazing. And it was. And I would come home every day after school and I would, you know, turn on the station and at uh, dinner time I'd put on one of my dad's record albums and it would be, you know, the dinner time <laughs> hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that I would run upstairs and, uh, and broadcast into the night before doing homework. And some of your friends in the neighborhood were probably listening mm -hmm. in. I would assume some of these girls. Uh, well, I didn't you know. Them. You know, I didn't know. I had a friend who would come over and help me, and he loved to um, the whole process. You know, it's it's so much fun. And, oh yeah. As if people would be listening, but we're pretending. And then we did a contest, and the contest. I went out with the tape recorder and I interviewed one of the neighbors, and I didn't say who they were. So I came back, and I, and the big contest was guess the secret neighbor. <laughs> so we we broadcast it, and there's a little, you know, interview with the the person, uh -huh. and I give our telephone number, and someone calls, <laughs> which freaks us out. <laughs> you did have listeners, <laughs> and, and and they guessed it right. What, what did we, they win? What, exactly. <laughs> what did they win? So I said, you know, I got to go back on the air right now. I'm and I hand it off to my friend. <laughs> And my friend keeps talking to them and talking to them, and then he comes up and gets me. He says, "You got to take the phone. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take over. You got to tell him something." I'll go. Um, so uh, yeah, I uh, we've got a um, a collection of comic books, and you're welcome to come by and have your pick. <laughs> Cherry pick. <laughs> yeah, the comic book of your choice, <laughs> just for listening to King Radio. <laughs> that is fascinating. Now when. When you were, uh, you said that you used to listen to suspense radio and yeah. mystery theaters and things like that. Did you have any disc jockeys that were you, you were enamored with uh, some person, air personalities? Well, that who came you that were came um, a little bit later. I see. As I got into rock and roll, uh, you know, I I I was when I was now I was ten years old at the time I was doing the broadcasting. They had a show on a lo there were two local radio stations. One was K E Y J. And they did a program uh, mornings called Man on the Street. And it would just be the manager of the station would go out with a microphone onto the street and talk to people as they went by. That was the whole deal. He was real charismatic and outgoing and fun. And I come along and he said, hey, well, who are you? So what are you interested in? Oh, I, art and um, radio, I guess. And he goes, radio, really? That's fantastic. Well, tell me about it. So I tell him about my little radio station, and he goes, that is really unusual. You know, you should come down to the station and uh, talk to us about, maybe we'll put you on the air with a radio show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of unnerving. So I, I, go, to, I, I go down and I see them, and they, and they go, we want to put you on the air Saturday mornings doing a little rock and roll radio show, and we'll call you the world's youngest disc jockey. Now, at this time, you were, what, 12? No, I was Perhaps. 11. 11? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and were you married then? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that drama was yet to come. That was yet to come, all right. 
And so I uh, went on the air, and and, they, and and I still have the picture that was in the paper. Um, me with a stack of records and a microphone as the world's youngest disc jockey. And I would go in, and one of the um, you know disc jockeys of the station would run the board, and I would give them a list of the songs in order and have my little information, you know, things I'd talk about, what's going on in town, what's going on at the schools, and... I'm sure it was terrible and, you know... And I doubt it. Cute. <laughs> this little, little guy. Cute, yes. But I was into it. it was, and you'd cue them and the, and the record would start and you'd go and you'd talk over the beginning of the record and it was magic. It was power. Yeah. And I, and I did that for, um, I guess, a couple of years. And then became, you know, uh, I went to work at the radio station. I did, uh, you know, weekends and... And vacation relief and that kind of thing. And uh, and kept doing that quite a lot through high school. And now at that time, I was really into rock and roll and, and, and to uh, radio. And we could listen in Jamestown, we could hear Chicago radio. So I could hear WLS. And um, Dick Biondi was, a, was an early favorite. And out of KOMA in Oklahoma City, Coma in Oklahoma, there was a guy named Chuck Dan. All right. During the next segment of the Chuck Dan Show, within the next five minutes, it's now 10 after 7 o'clock, Fair and Cool, yes, friends, me, will do my imitation of Spanish moss, that well-known flamingo dancer. <laughs> Chuckles Dan Show time. This is brand new with my Roy Hayes. You see the pretty little thing <laughs> right over there. Good morning, everybody. Roy Head this morning at KQWB, and it's called Wiggling and Giggling. You might have seen him on what's left of the dig clock, where the action is the other day on the tube. 56 degrees, a bit of light rain. It's 12 minutes after 7 o'clock, and I understand this morning we have another runner-up for the Miss 16 contest. Hi. I love this guy. He, was a, he had a great big voice and a jingle that said, He's a big bunch of fun, and he weighs about a ton. <laughs> He's a real swinging man, and his name is Chuck Dan. What a man, Chuck Dan. And Chuck would do, you know, he had, um, he had a, he had a, voices that he did. Um, what was the name? Uh, like a weatherman, you know, a fake weatherman. And and it was really clever. He was really clever. And then he, um, over the years, he went from KOMA to uh, CKY in Winnipeg, Canada's friendly giant. And at that moment in time, CKY was. A fabulous radio station. It was bigger than life and had a great big jingle and big uh, imaging and it was very exciting to listen to. And when he was on, I was there. You know, I listened to him every day. So much so that when I was in college, I, um, I called him and the zombies were going to be in Winnipeg for a concert. And we, we wanted to come up and, and uh, just meet him. Were they a British group or American? British. They're British. Yeah. Later became um, Paul Atkins, one of the um, members of the group, later became a friend of ours. Um, but at that moment in time, we went to, to meet Chuck Dan, and he was this little, round, you know, heavy set guy with this great big voice. You know? Later on, in, in, uh, he be, when he left radio, he became one of the top uh, voiceover people in mm. the world and did um, all of the. Uh, Channel 7, Eyewitness News, and all that. Uh, Chuck Riley was his name. In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, right. but he did he did things all over. All over the country. Because yeah. he had a, a beautiful voice. Chuck Dan here with a big congratulations to our boat show queen winner last night, Peggy Chewy of Youngstown. She's 21 years of age and a very pretty gal, and she cried last night because she was so happy. Congratulations also to first runner-up Paula White and second runner-up Joanne Cater in the Mid-America Boat Show and the WKYC Boat Show Queen. Congratulations. Here's Neil Diamond going to sing Mama, it. Mama, she always told me it would happen. Two weeks and climbing like wildfire. Three twenty-one in the afternoon from WKYC, the Chuck Dan Show. Neil's Diamonds, you got some to me there. Yeah, that's what. Your leader corporation agent in the Frank F. Broad Agency is Ira Novak. His telephone number is 621-7715. 5 30 to 9 tomorrow morning from the Sheraton Lincoln. Am I saying it right? Is it Sheraton Cleveland? Sheraton Cleveland. Project Heartbeat. Charlie and Harrigan tomorrow morning. Gonna start raising wonderful people and their efforts for the Heart Fund on Heart Sunday. 
The song, The Six and the Sound Eleven, it's the Mamas and the Papas, and it's called The Words of Love. I've been informed by those in the know in the record biz, the Mamas and the Papas have a new one. You'll hear it first at KY next. And he welcomed us in and showed us around and said, come on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm introducing the show tonight, so come with us and got us tickets. And, and to the zombies. We were in heaven. Yeah. Great. Oh, my God, the zombies. They were so They great. had a big hit, I think, uh, She's Not There. Yeah, She's Not yeah. There and Time of the Season. Time of and the Tell season. Her No. And, great and, songs. You know, great yeah. songs. And, um, Colin Blundstone, the lead singer, is still one of the great singers of all time. But it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her. She's not there Well, let me tell you about the way she looked The way she had tanned the color of her hair Her voice was soft and cool Her eyes were clear and bright But she's not there But, um, yeah, those were my radio um, idols um, of course, there's Wolfman Jack and XERB. Well, let's go back, just if I could just hop back to uh, K-A- K-E-Y-J, K-E-Y-J-A-M. You said that the man was doing the interviews of the man on the street, and you just happened to be walking by when he, when yeah. he interviewed you? you How you about you? What's you didn't your name? Pl- you didn't plan that. No, no. Okay. No, it just no happened. It was, yeah. it was fate. It was fate. Right. It was written. That is fascinating. So... Okay, so Chuck Dan, you met him, and did this uh, meeting with him? Did you did you become sort of uh, more determined to uh, pursue a career in radio at this time, or were you still undecided? Um, I, very undecided. Okay. Uh, it was something that was really fun to me. I really wanted to be an artist, and uh, at that same time, I painted monster T-shirts in a mall, and I and with an airbrush, you know, and fluorescent paint, and and the kind of block lettering that they do on uh, and graffiti. That's really what what my it was goodness. like. Big wow. Daddy Roth and Mouse, and I would copy them, and then I would make up my own. I got quite proficient at it, so I could sit in the mall and you know paint uh, a '57 Chevy with you know big slicks on the back and the little wheels on the front with the engine and the blower and the supercharger coming out and the chrome out of the sides and and dust you know in the wind and. And these monsters with the big gear shift. And at that time, my very first car was was a Crosley. And a Crosley was a little uh, two-seater sports car that was built in the 50s. And I put a uh, 38 Ford V8 engine in it. And it looked just like one of the things I would draw. It had these giant, well, giant at the time. And there, there were 15-inch wheels on the back, but 12-inch wheels on the front. So it sat at this rakish kind of look with a great big gear shift that, <laughs> that my, you know, my hand was like way up above the steering wheel and I w- with a big chrome ball. And as I drove, and it was very fast. As you would imagine, a V8 engine in a tiny little, probably weighed, you know, 1,200 pounds. This little tiny car, really dangerous. We would slow down on the freeway and ask people how fast they were going, and, and they would go, 80? Really? And we'd take off. <laughs> it's like, and did what? you have a radio? How did we the- live? Of course. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a radio. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. Well, so you were listening mainly to AM radio because that was where the top 40 action was at. Well, that's all there was yeah. at that time. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, there were- and, the, and the radio stations in town played... Uh, you know, top 40 music, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. especially KSJB, which is a big station. And uh, so you were listening to stations from Canada. You were listening to stations on both sides of the Mississippi. Well, at night, you could listen to everything. Yeah. In the daytime, you had to listen to whatever was local. And then we could hear the Fargo stations as well. And Fargo had KQWB, ultimately. And it was a station I ended up working for for a while. They were the uh, status quo. They were a real rock and roll top 40 uh-huh. radio station uh-huh. and all the really good guys work there KQWB. this is bj thomas kqwb survey music hooked on feeling 11 past eight seven below on the knutson show <laughs> a little rhyme i made up can you recall any of their names yeah chuck knapp okay. was a uh, was a a great radio personality. He, he, he ended up going to WRKO in Boston before I did. And then when I went to Boston, I ended up taking his place. 
Is that right? Well, so you went to KQWB. Was that your first uh, job in no. radio? No. No. Okay. KEYJ was my first job. But right. during that time, uh, and, and I did radio, but I, I wanted to make a lot of money before going to college. So I, I, I took other kinds of... These are interesting stories. They are. Um, I worked on a, on a farm in Spiritwood, North Dakota for aliens. Now, this would be good for George Norrie. Um, you mean outer space aliens? I mean, I'm telling you, and this is the way the story goes. Little family lived in Spiritwood, North Dakota. They had mushroom heads. They had the classic little small jaw, and then their their skulls actually w- went out like about two inches. Because so it was like a mushroom. They had large brains. Okay. Was it just this one family, or the? Yeah, whole? that's all. All that we know. They had, they kept to themselves. They okay. had this little farm, and we hauled bales. And it was, you know, my uh, my friends that, that I went through high school with were all very close, and we were funny people, and hung out, and we had all the parties. None of us drank or anything. We we were just hot you know, high energy. You know, loved cars and motorcycles and. And um, at our parties, it was all Little Richard. Little Richard was the soundtrack of our lives. And, and, and when we wanted to make out with the girls, it was Sergio Mendez. <laughs> you know, like you, you, you're, you're going to chill later on when you cuddle up. And that's Sergio Mendez. Mosh <clears throat> Yeah, in Brazil 66. <laughs> so um, so we, we it, the hardest, almost the hardest work in the world. I've got another one that's worse. Um, hauling bales is Tough. you have big you have hooks in either hand and you grab a bale clump on either side and you lift it up over your head and throw it in a truck you do this from five in the morning until eight at night long days and out in the field it's sweaty it's hard and then you'd come in and eat the biggest dinners in the world it was thanksgiving every day and our little alien family would supply you know turkey and roast beef and all of the fixins and uh, you know multiple pies cherry pie and pumpkin pie and we would sit and we would all eat 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 and tell jokes drink a lot of iced tea now, and it would go like this if the um, if the punchline to the joke was um, and he said zenith and everybody would laugh everybody laugh <laughs> and the and the little alien man would go Zenith. <laughs> uh, and then a couple of minutes later he'd go Zenith. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this became this became something we all did for the rest of our time together. Now, years later, and this is like maybe a year ago, I could not remember my whole adult life who these people were, and I could never find out. I said, you know the little alien people that lived out in Spiritwood? And, and people go, uh, no. Um, and I'm going, I know I didn't make this up. I know this really happened. There were, so I called my friend who I went through high school with, and he was the um, quarterback of the football team, and, and we were tri-captains. We were terrible, and, and I was not a great football player. And they made me captain. I didn't even know why. It's like, because we were maybe better if there are three of us i don't know but anyway i call ray and i say ray do you remember the alien people that we worked out with in spiritwood north dakota i've been trying to remember their name for decades and no one can even remember them and he goes oh you mean virgie shock virgie shock is that a a a venus name (laughs) a venusian (laughs) he came to earth hovered over a sears catalog (laughs) Morphed into a living copy of a human being and <laughs> decided to call himself Virgie Shock. <laughs> so then I go off to, I work on the city, and, and that is like filling in potholes and, and doing asphalt work. Well, that's work, tough work, you know, too. And that's yeah. tough work. I've done that. <clears throat> but the hardest one was uh, working on the railroad. I worked on the railroad in Zap and Gackle, North Dakota. <laughs> And this is, uh, we, and lived in a boxcar. This is harsh. But we made more money than we could make doing anything else in a very short period of time. But it, again, is five in the morning until eight or nine at night. 
And what you do is you go out on the rails at five in the morning and you start putting in new rails or pulling out um, uh, the railroad ties. And you do that all day. Then you go home to your boxcar with stinking, sweating, farting, smoking, cursing, drinking. No ventilation. Yes, um, (laughs) men. No ventilation. It's not like they bring in the maid to clean this place up, you know. (laughs) So this lasted part of the summer until I couldn't take it anymore, and then I would I would rent a, a motel room in Zap, North Dakota. So but I'm out there and I'm going. If I never sleep for the rest of my life and do something that I like, it'll never be work. This is work. This is unacceptable. <laughs> I cannot do this again. <clears throat> so uh, when I quit, I went and bought a great car, and I was off and running to the University of North Dakota. Uh, And it was the University of North Dakota because although I wanted to come out here where everyone was cool and groovy, my parents brought me out here to, I was accepted at Art Center School of of Design. Where? um, Here in town. In Los Angeles. And uh, and at the time it was in Los Angeles, now it's in Pasadena. It's one of the the preeminent art schools in the country. And, uh, And at University of <clears throat> at uh, San Diego State University. So my parents bring me out here mm-hmm. to see the, the schools. It freaked me out. It was like, everyone in California is cool, and they all know that I'm not. <laughs> I am never coming out here. This is too much. It was an overload. I, and I never mentioned it again. I quickly looked into the University of North Dakota. Okay, I can go there. I have some friends there. And it's only 150 miles from home. And You'll fit in. I'll fit in. You know, and even then, it was really hard. I, I uh, left Jamestown to drive to the University of North Dakota. And I think I cried the whole way. It was like overwhelming to me. It's like, okay, my childhood's over, and it's like I'm moving away from this great family, and I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I just like, oh, God, I was scared. And I get up there and, of course, quickly joined a fraternity and uh, had a family around me, and and everyone partied and supported each other, and we were brothers. And, gosh, life was full. And then I got a job at K-I-L-O. K-I-L-O. It's interesting. So many drug references. My first station was Key J <laughs> and K I L O. Later, I would work for Kicks. Now, when you were in L.A. with your parents on that first visit to to L.A. Southern California, did you happen to listen to the radio? Oh yeah, at, of course. And and at that time, it was um, the Beatles. Beatles the were Beatles big all the way out and all the way back. British yeah. invasion. Yeah, it was all very exciting. Dave Clark Five and yeah. The zombies, of and, course. Yeah, it was uh, a remarkable time. Very, very exciting. And so that's what we, uh, that's what we did. Did you hear anything that, you, that struck you as, uh, you know, cap- captured your interest in radio? On the uh, no, LA not, not really. Okay. I, I, I was still fixated on art. Radio is, was an odd thing for me. Um, it was a vehicle that I enjoyed doing. But it didn't seem like it, what, what I should do for work. Um, I wanted to be an illustrator, or and at the time, doing like comic books or and that kind of thing was completely impractical. And I didn't think I could make a living doing that. And so, being an illustrator and uh, for um, magazines and and advertising that seemed was, like a good way to go. That was your goal. Yeah. Okay. So I was a, an art major for the first three years. And then I, uh, I got a job at KQWB in my third year of college. And, um, and it was kind of a, it was a big deal because it was a really good station. And now they're going to put me on, on KQWB FM. Oh. And, they, and I had the name, I had used the name Jefferson K because it, it was just, I liked Jefferson was kind of soulful and black and K was like Murray the K, so it was Jefferson the letter K. And uh, they put me on the air, uh, the Jefferson K R&B showcase or something like that. It, it was all R&B music. And I loved it. All of, you know, the Solomon Burks and the Frida Paynes and the 
and uh, Aretha Franklin's and uh, all the great music that's as good today as it was then. And that's what we were playing. Morehead, Minnesota. It's 8 o'clock. KQWB, all American. Jefferson K. What am I doing here? Okay, is it all set? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. This is the all-new Jefferson K. Show, and it's time again for another large labor of love of listenable librettos and lyrics amidst loud, liberal laughs and lively language from lollagating libraries of loin yet living, plus late, leisurely, lazy leadings of the land from your lousy, co lousy, lippy, leferio, long, lark Jefferson K. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to believe here. It's, it's hard to believe. Jefferson K. on the radio tonight. That uh, forecast, that prognostication for the valley. Well, right now we're lo- we have a uh, partly cloudy 31 degrees. The winds are from the east at 6 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is steady at 30.15. We're, we're gonna get it up tight. Everything is gonna be all right. Got to have... Jefferson K on the radio. 98.7. Here's the monkeys from the all American sound of KQWB. That's a little bit of me and a little bit of you, and this is the Jefferson K. All-American Sound from KQWB. And Jefferson K. out to lunch bunch. Uh, six, six minutes past nine o'clock. Happy time, OTL time, from the world's ugliest. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's 30 degrees, 31 degrees in downtown uh, Fargo. That's where we are. Move up to Chrysler. Chrysler now at Corwin Churchill, 422 NP Avenue, Fargo. We all want the best for our cars, and that's why Automatic Car Wash has good news. For both the Automatic Car Wash and the Jiffy Car Wash will be open Friday night till 8 p.m. K, K, Q, Q, W, W, B, B, K, Q, W, B, Channel K. It all started once here, gang. I do believe it. I do believe that's true. <laughs> Barry Chase used to live in a zoo. I know you find that hard to believe. Jefferson K on the radio, and it's uh, 10 minutes past 8 o'clock. Jefferson K, uh, happy time, OTL time, and tis now 31 degrees in the Twin Towns at uh, 10 minutes past. 8 o'clock, KQWB, Jefferson K, happy time. Oh, yeah, it's not bad. And I did that, and I drove back and forth the University of North Dakota. That's 90 miles every day. I would go to school all day. I'd get in the car. I'd drive down to Fargo. I'd do the radio show until 1 in the morning. Then I'd get back, and I would drive back to Grand Forks and get some sleep and go to class again and do it again the next day. And about um, six or eight months into doing that, the uh, program director of, um, of KQWB knew that I wanted to go south. And I never lost the uh, hunger to be away from the snow. And, you know, where everything went glimmery. So you mean the south, <clears throat> the southern states? or Yes. Okay. And he found a job in Tucson, Arizona. He well, said, this is perfect for Southwest, you. okay. And, I, you know, send, him a, send them a demo. You know, you're young, you're you know, just what they're looking for. So I did, and they gave me the job. And it was huge. This is really exciting. This is KIKX? This is KIKX. It's a brand new top 40 station in Tucson going up against the, uh, the KTKT, which was the big uh, station there. And they were going to really support it and put my name in the you know picture in the paper and everything and i got there and it was 
da 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 It was the big time. Mm-hmm. It was the city. Mm-hmm. Speedway Boulevard. Oh, God, we get out and cruise Speedway. Oh, my God, it was so cool. And it was hot. And we were at the Bel Air Sands Hotel. So the, the um, studios were there. Across the grass was the pool. The girls in the pool. This is heaven. Jeff Anderson Kicks 58. Oscar Tony Jr., $1,000 in Kicks Cash offered daily in the 100 for 1 fun test. Ooh, Sakani's presents a teen fashion blast. Fashions galore with teen flattery and focus, modern budget prices. Enjoy special store-wide savings on the most exciting preschool event of the year. Drop in at Sakani's discotheque department. Hear the top tunes of the day, available in both English and Spanish versions. With a minimum purchase of $20, Sakani's offers a bonus gas certificate, which will entitle you to five gallons of gas absolutely free. But you must say you heard about this offer on Kicks. That's at Sakani's in the Southgate Shopping Center. Tommy James and the Shondells at 548. La 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 <laughs> Here from Dry Gulch comes a story of the woman saying to the bus station ticket teller, I'd like a ticket for Florence, please. And after searching a town directory, the bewildered agent said, Where is Florence? And the woman said, I'm sitting right over there on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> funny. <laughs> uh, going to Stereo Go Go today? No, I'm not about to. Say, pal. Uh... Going to Stereo Go Go? No, I'm not going to Stereo Go Go today. Anyhow, I'm too busy to even think about going. Why didn't you come to Stereo Go Go today? What in heavens is wrong with you? I am not going in that final. Say, pal. No, 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 I'm not going. I've got a million and one things to take care of. I couldn't possibly go. They've got a real deal on a 4 8 track combination unit, just $99 installed with four speakers. Uh, what time did you say you were going to Stereo Go? Go-Go. See the complete line of our stereos at Stereo Go-Go, 4471 East Speedway, across from the Midway Drive-In Theater. <laughs> you know, a man... Key. Yes, a man can outrun his shadow, but a drive can outtrace his headlights. Right. The National Safety Council reminds you that a safe speed for night driving is one that permits stopping within the stretch of road elimin- eliminated by your headlights. No there. kidding? I have a little trouble with my throat here. <laughs> The biggest sale in Beaver's Band Box history is going on right now at Beaver's Band Box, 4540 East Broadway. Discounts up to 25% on major brand items. Fox, Rickenbacker, Gretsch, and many others. Stop in at Beaver's Band Box today and ask about their rental purchase plan. And while you're there, get a guitar lesson from the best in town, Keith Llewellyn of the Llewellyn Brothers. Learn music the correct way. That's at Beaver's Band Box, 4540 East Broadway. It's what's happening. Jefferson K. It's 58. Win a free hunt of the Jefferson K. Honda happening happening. Next week on the radio. To my Good afternoon from the Professor K Foundation. <laughs> the Buffalo Springfield there. Hit the bluebird. Hit the bluebird. Now hit the bird. Hi, my name's Noel. I am in the third grade. It's school time. Again, and we little kids are everywhere. We have a lot of energy, we know. We move fast. If you're a driver, I hope you move slow. Watch out for us. Please. Watch out for him, would you please? Uh, brought to you by Wildcat Laundry and Dry Cleaners. The preceding has been a public service in the public interest. Wildcat Laundry at 912 East Speedway is conveniently located near the University of Arizona, which is right in our very town. Good heavens. Wildcat Laundry features the same day service professionally clean. That's Wildcat Laundry at 912 East of Speedway. Mike McGinnis, special space. Easiest place in town to buy a car. Hey, I can't. Yes. requested song. Hey, Daddy, you got a cat in the window now. Tula <laughs> Clark here. Try to. Kimo Sabi. Good song. Uh, yes, good. Sir. Yes, good, good song. 
Tonight at the Dunes at 5822 East Speedway, the night sounds. No cover, no minimum, and uncompanied girls' drinks. Half price. Be sure you visit the Dunes tonight. Hear the night sounds tonight. An experience in sound at the Dunes 5822 East Speedway. It's what's happening to me. Kick 58 yesterday. At 5.57, kicks $1,000 a day time. Here's the loving spoonful. Hot counts. Means you'll find out if you've won $580 in kicks cash. Listen for your street. Then be first to call the kicks fun phone, triple eight, triple six six, and play UFO. Kicks happens with big money with UFO. And then I went off the University of Arizona, which was, you know, what it's and it is one of the most beautiful universities in the country. This was in Tucson, also in Tucson. Okay. And I decided that, you know, there are people who, you know, I'm a decent artist, but I'm slow. There are guys who would sit next to me, you know. And it's perfect, and I want to frame it. And I'll go, I could do that, but it would take me about two hours. And they're like, and I'm going, "Ah." so maybe I had to stick with what's paying the bills and uh, go into television, radio, drama, learn how to act. And so I became a drama major, theater major, and um, with a um, sub major in um, journalism. So I'd learned to write. And I threw myself in the University of Arizona and became the afternoon drive of KIKX. And you were 21, <clears throat> 20? I was 20. 20. Um, I went to college when I was 17, so 17, 18, 19. Uh, 20, I was in Tucson. and um, KIKX was a top 40? KIKX okay. was a very exciting station, well run, with really great people. And uh, we, you, they ended up hiring a bunch of people I really liked. Um, can you recall some of their Yeah, there's a guy named names. Peter Huntington May, okay. who I knew from Minneapolis. When you go from North Dakota, going to Minneapolis is like going to New York. It's like big, big exciting, time. fun. Never tell them you're from North Dakota, ever. I know it's only Minnesota. But they seriously looked down their noses. Oh, you farmers out there. <laughs> so, so what we would do is we would go to Minneapolis and, you know, listen to the radio. And, and, and it was um, KDWB. KDWB and WDGY, some of the great call letters of all time. The Twin Love Cities. both stations. Yeah. Both were really exciting. And we would go down there and say, they say, where are you from? On, uh, California. Really? What part? Newport Beach. <laughs> No kidding. I, I have a Where family out from? there. What um, uh, what part? Well, um, just off Main Street. <laughs> well, how come your your car has a North Dakota license plate? <laughs> well, you know, it's a divorce thing. You know, my parents are split up, and, and they would treat us like gods. Uh, California people, you know, same people, but different contexts. And so we would play that, and it would be great. Now, Peter Huntington May was one of the great personalities from KDWB. I think that was a Chuck Bloor, one of the Chuck Bloor stations. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know much about it. Um, it was affiliated but it was with a terrific KFWB, station. which in Los Angeles was, yeah. was sister station, yeah, cousin the, the station. The WB uh, yeah. stations. And then WDGY was another great station. And both, you know, he'd switch back and forth and, and uh, both very exciting. Sort of like... Um, the New York stations, WABC and WMCA, you know, great, both great stations with great personalities. And, and at night, we could hear them sometimes in North Dakota. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, so Chicago Radio and, um, you were and get- Detroit Radio, CKLW. You were getting it all. We got it all. They're Wonderful. in the heartland. Wonderful. And so that's what I grew up listening to and, and having the influence of you know, great personalities. Right. So it, at KIKX in Tucson, you this was around 1967? Yeah, uh, 67. 67. I was in yeah. Tucson from 67 until 69. Two years. Two years. Um, so you, did you become one of the better, more popular jocks? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, very much so. It, it was... Um, and you were still Jefferson K. Jefferson K. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears now. Smiling faces, David, if you can take it. 24 minutes before 6 with Jefferson K. Do yourself a favor. That was Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Smiling Phases for the Blood, Sweat, and Tears album 19 minutes before 6 for the last time around with Jefferson K. These are the doors in lovely two times. 55 degrees in Tucson. And, uh, and at KRLO, I became, you know, a more colorful person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you took a stage name, I guess. Yes, uh, you know, I had a context. I had a little different, um, you know, background. And, and, and I... I was really terrible. I was no. Re- no. No. I have tapes of KILO. I've heard and those you tapes. you will laugh. <laughs> I've heard them. I transferred them. Oh, you those. transferred yes. them. That's right. You're the one of the few people in the world who had the nerve to laugh. <laughs> I think they're fascinating. <laughs> oh, God. Forecast for the valley calls for partly cloudy, decreasing winds and colder tonight. Partly cloudy with increasing southerly winds and not so cold on Wednesday. Partly cloudy and not so cold on Wednesday night with a chance of precipitation of about 5%. Tonight They're tomorrow. just embarrassing. Plenty of echo. I tried everything. You know, I was trying to copy. Uh, I got um, um, record albums from um, Philadelphia. Uh, Jerry Blavitt. Love Jerry Blavitt. The heater the, with the, the heater. The heater with the heater. The heater the with the, the heater. Uh, you know, and I, and I copied all of that stuff. And I was trying to do Jerry Blavitt, and it was so bad. Because I had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying to find a style that sounded exciting and fun and and created a, a persona. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. Personally. No, not until I got to Fargo. I started getting better when I was among people who were, you know, and, and more better processing, you know, they had compression and they made a station sound all pulled together. And then I got um, significantly better in Tucson. And then when I finally got to Boston, that's when I found So myself. in Tucson, just before you went to Boston, you were, you were in Tucson for two years during the height of the psychedelic era. Yeah, yeah add, we brought in the doors. 67 and, to 69. Who were some of the other jocks that were pretty big at that time? Can you recall? Or even maybe the competing station? I don't remember. I did I did, I did a morning show for a while called uh, Baron K. It was um, Jefferson K. and Ted Bear. So Baron K, see? Clever, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, we did. <clears throat> and and all radio is so terrible. They, they have you do all of these awful things that they would sell. You know? And one was, one was really humiliating. Uh, it's bad enough to go out in a trailer and broadcast live from a car lot. But this was Jefferson K. is going to ride this motor scooter, not even a motor scooter, moped, a moped around a, a prescribed uh, map around Tucson. Until he runs out of gas. The one who guesses w- closest to where he runs out of gas wins. Like the intersection of Speedway and... Or the night. middle of nowhere in a... And this is exactly what happened. Every day. I'm out there on this humiliating little awful moped. You know, down Speedway. Uh, over through the back, and of course it runs out of gas in a in a residential neighborhood where I've got to go from house to house. <laughs> Hi, I I know this is weird, but uh, you know I'm from the radio station KIKX, and and I'm telling the story, and and they let me make the phone call to call in that I ran out of gas. Uh, oh God! At fourteen sixteen yeah. Maple Lane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was just terrible. And, That's um, a riot. And you did this every day? For, well, for, well, a, yeah, for a period of time. Until I ran out of gas. I don't know how long it was. It was like a <laughs> week or two weeks or whatever it was. It was so stupid. You know, and at the same time, I was in, you know, I was a full-time student and uh, in plays. And I did <clears throat> my first play. My first play as a drama major, theater major, at the University of Arizona, 
I didn't even want to do this. I just wanted to go to school and do my job. Now I go with the 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 um, news director Roger Galloway, who is a great guy, and he was a theater major, and um, and he was like our Paul Oscar Anderson. You wow. know, was, um, Roger Galloway, twenty twenty news, and and he. Uh, wanted to go try out for this play, After the Fall, which is an Arthur Miller play um, about Marilyn Monroe. It is one of the longest plays in the English language. It's like goodness. up there with King Lear. and Or and, The Iceman Cometh. It is crazy long. Now, I'm there for him to audition. And they go through, and all these people are going up, and I see people that are really pretty terrific. And now they're down to the lead. They're going to audition for the lead. And he says, is there anyone else here, you know, before we wrap up that wants to uh, audition? And Roger raises his hand and goes, over here. And he points to me. I'm going, no, 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 no. He's just, no, no, you can do it. You're on radio. You can go read that thing. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you just go down there and read it. Just read the thing. You'll sound great. <sighs> okay. So I walk down the aisle and I go up on the stage and they give me the sides and I, and I read it and they love it and they give it to me. Wow. Going, oh my God. Now what? I've got to learn how to do this thing while I'm working full time, while I'm doing all of this other stuff. Now I've got to learn one of the longest plays in the English language and I've got to do it in a limited amount of time. The, um, the result was it came off really, really terrific. Um, and I got great, great reviews, and everybody was talking about, you know, what I could be. Great mm-hmm. actor by the time you're 30. And I'm going, 30? Are you ki- 30? <sighs> no, I, I'm going to do this until I'm 30 before I have any, any anything? No, 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 I'm, I'm going to be in radio. <clears throat> so then, on the, on the heels of that, I'm in a, 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 an experimental theater class. And they give us a two-person play called Blood Knot. It's me and this black guy whose name I've forgotten. And it's a story about a black-white relationship. Um, I hate the play. Hate it. I hate everything about it. It's somber, it's, and it's long. <laughs> there are two people in this play, <laughs> and it's a full-length, hour-and-a-half play. Now, I'm supposed to learn these lines in two weeks. Two weeks. Um, okay. Now, I just come off learning this gigantic play, and I'm going, ah, I made it, and I did well. Okay, now I need a breather. No. So, I try. I really try. And I cannot remember these words. I don't like them. I don't want to do it. All of my body is fighting against doing this play. And, I, and I'm doing everything I can to learn it. I'm doing my best. But we're down to the last week, and neither one of us could remember the words. Your co-star. So I go know. to the head of the department. I say, you know, you've got to give us another week. If we can give us another week, we can do this. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. This is the theater. The show must go on. <laughs> so we decide. No, I decide. <laughs> this is really humiliating. <laughs> I decide that this is an experimental theater class. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the radio station and we'll record the entire play on tape and put up a tape machine at the side of the stage with speakers and mouth the words. Wow. Seems like a good idea, doesn't it? And your co-star was all for this. He didn't know what else to do. Yeah. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't remember. And so, <laughs> so the night of the play, and the and the and the, um, the, the theater is all set up with the you know the um, the staging and everything is 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 set. It all takes place in this place that they live, and uh, we come out, and they start and the tape starts, and there isn't one word, one line, one cue, one anything that was even close to what was on the tape. Our mouths were moving because we don't know the words anyway. You know, we're trying to remember the words that we know, and then <laughs> so it's like watching and, a Japanese horror movie. Uh, even worse, <laughs> no worse. This is embarrassing, and people are leaving. You know, and it's it's terrible, and it and it lasts about a hundred years. <laughs> you know, you're going blah 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 blah. blah. Boom. 
you hit the table, but your your hand isn't hitting the table at the same time your hand is hitting the table on the sound, and then it's an hour and a half long. So at the end of the play, there's only my girlfriend Linda and <laughs> and the uh, and, and and a couple of people from the department who are left in the audience, and we end it. Now, the uh, Mr. Maroney, the head of the department, was livid. It's like, this is embarrassment. This is an embarrassment. You will not do that again. We had two nights. We had to do it two nights. Not one night, two nights. So so the second night, we did the whole thing Live. with scripts. We read, we just held the script and, and went through it. And it was just one humiliating moment after an hour, <laughs> another. It, it was, and it was at that time that I, I, I came to the conclusion that life was an infinite series of humiliating moments indefinitely prolonged. And anything that wasn't humiliating at any moment was just a breather to set you up for the next <laughs> horrifying, humiliating, humbling moment. Such as your first play was a success just setting you up for this disaster. Yes. But how long did that first play last? Uh, uh, it, it was uh, a week or 10 days. It wasn't oh, okay. real long, right. time, but there were quite a few performances. And you got rave reviews, you said. I so, did. I got yeah. great reviews. Well, you know, yeah. I think it was just a matter of you got to choose the right script. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the lesson here is, but it was Neither so difficult. Means you'll find out if you've won $580 in kicks cash. Listen for your street. Then be first to call the Kicks Fun Ford, triple eight, triple six six, and play UFO. Kicks happens with big money with UFO. Saturday night, May twenty fifth. It's two of Edgar Allan Poe's greatest classics: <laughs> The Pit and the Pendulum. In the House of Usher. An experience in horror. Presented by Kawasaki Motorcycles and the 22nd Street Drive-In. Admission just $1.50 per carload. Free 45 records to the first 200 cars. Free movie passes. Free car wash passes. And anyone on a motorcycle admitted absolutely free. A brand new Kawasaki motorcycle will be given away. The Pit. And the pendulum and the house of Usher. Two of Edgar Allan Poe's greatest classics. Masterpieces in Terror. Presented by Kawasaki Motorcycles of Tucson on the 22nd Street Drive-In. Admission $1.50 per carload. The pit and the pendulum. And the house of Usher. Doors open at 11 p.m. Be there. <laughs> Means you'll find out if you've won $580 in Kicks Cash. Listen for your street. Then be first to call the Kicks Fun Ford, 888 and play UFO. Kicks happens with big money with UFO. <laughs> And so that was my two years in Tucson. 